the light SUV segment has quickly grown to become Australia's most popular. And of the 28 contenders currently available, it's these three that are the segment's newest. On test are the Mazda CX-3, the Honda HR-V and the Renault Captiv. Each is priced from around $30,000 in as tested form and each offers the expected levels of practicality and drivability. But it's the subtle differences in on-road character and value for money that determine which is a better fit for prospective buyers. The Honda HR-V comes with petrol power only. It's purely front-wheel drive and comes with a continuously variable transmission as standard. The CX-3 on the other hand offers a lot more choice. It's available with petrol or diesel power, manual or automatic transmissions, as well as the choice of two and all-wheel drive. Then there's the Renault Captur. Like the HRV, the Captur comes as a front-wheel drive only proposition, but has the choice of two petrol engines and the availability of manual or automatic transmissions. In spite of being front-wheel driven, the Honda HRV provides plenty of cornering grip. It's a comfortable ride too. And in spite of being similar in size to the larger CRV, doesn't feel bulky or hard to place on the road. The interior is quite roomy and the seat height excellent for easy entry and exit. And with a cargo area of 437 litres, the HRV offers plenty of room for the growing family. Boot space is one area in which the CX-3 comes unstuck. Mazda says the CX-3's 264 litres of cargo space suits pre-family buyers and with a slightly more compact cabin, we're sure they're right. On the road, however, the CX-3 feels confident and reasonably energetic. It's more efficient than the Honda HRV and is also more zippy when tested against the stopwatch. The Renault Captur was likewise slower from a standing start but improved once on the go. It's also a pretty nifty handler and rides quite comfortably. Though when it comes to packaging, fits somewhere in between the CX-3 and the HRV with a moderately sized cabin and 377 litres of cargo space. But as vehicles that are likely to appeal to first time buyers, it's the after sales support side of the equation that's arguably as important as the drive itself. At first glance, the HRV is dearer than the other rivals, but it does include the automatic transmission as standard. It also offers a cap price servicing program midway between the CX-3 and Captur, but a shorter warranty and cost option roadside assist. The CX-3, meanwhile, offers the longest cap price service schedule of the three. However, you'll need to visit the service department more frequently than you would in the HRV or the Captur. And like the Honda, offers roadside assistance as a cost option. It's also the only SUV on test to offer a comprehensive array of electronic driver aids including autonomous braking, blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. For the Renault Captur we find a short cap price servicing program but a much longer warranty. Intervals at the service department are on par with the HRV, though more expensive than both it and the Mazda. However, we should point out that the range topping Captur Dynamic on test is $3,000 cheaper to buy than the Mazda and a whopping $5,000 cheaper than the Honda. Though none of the vehicles on test fell short of the mark, our judges decided it was the Mazda CX-3 that offered the best value for money. The CX-3's strong after-sales support program, good looks and easy to use standard equipment levels make it a sensible choice for a would-be light SUV buyer. And with lower running costs and a more manageable, compact size, the CX-3 is a great option for buyers chasing the benefits of a hatch-like practicality in a higher riding platform.